This one will send you for a bit of a spin just because it's like, man, what, is that? what does any of that even mean, right? Okay, you've got two complex numbers. That's the easy part. We want to find a number n, positive integer, right? So that's what power do you want to raise this to, such that when you take the quotient of these two and then you raise it to that power, you end up with a completely real number, okay? Now, let's just stop for a second and simplify this a little bit. Don't worry about the fact that it's a, um, it's a quotient, okay? Just think about if I took this number here. What is pi on 3? I sign pi on 3, okay? In order for a complex number to be completely real, right? A complex number to be completely real. What does that look like? Let me draw my um, complex plane again. What I mean is that the number after some times of multiplication, right? I end up back over here or over here. Right, either on the positive real axis or the negative real axis. Okay? Now, let's just make a note for a second. If all I care about is the number being real, right, how important is the modulus to that? <coughs> and the answer is, it's not that important at all. right? Because if I'm here, or here, or here, or here, I'm still going to be real, right? So I don't, I'm not that interested in the modulus. So therefore, this question is really a question about the argument. It's not the, a question about the angle. Now, what kind of angle am I interested in? Let's think about this number. This is very easy to plot, okay? If I said, all right, uh, 2, let's just make this x, 2, okay? Pi on 3. Where's pi on 3 on my diagram? Pi on 3, how many degrees is pi on 3 raised to? It's about 160. It's about 60. Well, it's not about. It's exactly 60 degrees, okay? So therefore, I'm thinking I'm going to be about here-ish. I'm going to call that z1, okay? Now, every time I multiply, for a moment, I'm going to forget about the modulus of the moment because, again, I'm only interested in whether the number, like which axis it reside on, so I'm just interested in the argument. If I multiply this number once, here I am. If I square it, where will I go? Double. I double the angle, don't I? Okay, so 60 will become 120. 120. So I'm going to be somewhere about here. So they need to square the Okay? Now, keep in mind, like this number is actually going to be further away. Why is it going to be further away? Because you don't just rotate, do you? You do two things. You scale and you spin. Right? So I'm getting further away. But the thing I'm really interested in is the angle. Okay, so here might be z1 squared. Where would Z1 cubed be? The angle, the angle will be tripled from the original, right? So, thinking back in degrees, 60 degrees will become 180, right? Or, more, more accurately, pi on 3 will become pi, okay? So, I'm going to come down to here. There you go. So, now I'm on the real axis. Are you happy with that? So, if all I had was just Z1, and I said, what power do you want me to raise you to such that you end up with a wholly real number? The answer would be 3. Do you agree with that? Like after the third time, I get back onto the real axis. So that number is wholly real. Okay? So now what I'm asking is something just a little more, just a little more complicated. That's all in terms of the arithmetic of it. Right? How am I going to state this? For a number, for this right, to be wholly real, I just want to say something about its argument, right? So the argument of this number is going to be now, what can I say about this thing? What can I say about this thing? Well, on the positive real axis, my angles are like 0 or what other kinds of angles could I have? 2 pi, 4 pi, 6 pi, 8 pi, they're all on the positive real axis, right? What about on the negative real axis? I've got pi, then I've got 3 pi, and then 5 pi. So I've got all the odd multiples over here. Okay. Now I haven't specified whether I'm a positive real number or a negative one. It's just either of those. Okay. So therefore, it's just some multiple of pi. Okay. Just any whole number multiple of pi. So I'm going to write, write it like this. Okay. I'm not using n because I would usually use n, but n's already been used up in the okay. So, does that make sense? This is what I'm after? Okay. So now, if this is what I'm trying to prove, right? This is what I'm trying to prove. Now I can start to compute. Now I'm ready to compute. Okay. So, 
let's say this. Um, what is the argument? Oops, sorry. What is the argument of just before we raise the power? What's the argument of the just the first time we drew the quotient, right? Well, the quotient means subtraction of angles, right? Because multiplication means the addition of angles. So this is going to be arg z1. Now I'm dividing, right? I'm dividing. So I'm going to subtract the other argument, right? Subtract arg z2. Are you okay with that? So I've got my first argument here, pi on 3. I'm subtracting what argument? Negative pi on 4. I'm just reading it off. So, what's this? 7 pi on 12. 7 pi on 12. Because I'm adding, you do your common denominators, it's fine. Okay? So that's just what happens when I do it once. But according to De Morris theorem, right? According to De Morris theorem, if I raise it to some bigger power, z1 on z2 and raise that thing to the n, okay? then the argument of this new number is I'm going to add this argument on repeatedly. How many times am I going to add it? Answer, n times, right? So I'm going to say this is 7 n pi on 12. And the reason I know that is because of Demarvis theorem. It's just a normal bracket. The more phrase. The more phrase. So wouldn't I say 7 n pi? Yep. Because why though? Why? It's the, number of cycles. it's the number of times I've gone around. So it's the number of <laughs> angles I've added. Okay? So now the question, remember, is find the smallest positive integer for n that's going to make that a whole number. Do you see that? Right? I want I want 7n on 12 to be a whole number. Okay? Now 7 and 12 are what we call um well 7 is a prime number, okay, so it's not going to share anything with 12 except for. 1, which is not very useful, okay? So therefore, what number do I have to multiply 7 by such that it'll go into 12? And the answer is 12, okay? So therefore, when n equals 12, right, what will the argument be? 7 pi. The argument will be 7, z1 or z2 to the 12, right? And I'm going to pop the brackets around there because I'm not raising the argument to the 12th power. I'm raising the complex number to the 12th power, which gives me 7 times 12 pi on 12, okay? So you can see that's going to give me 7 pi, and that's, that's a whole number, <coughs> okay? Are you happy with that? And you can see as well, if I subtract any multiple, of 7 pi on 12, none of the previous ones will be whole numbers, okay? They're always going to be awkward fractions because 7 is an awkward number, okay? So therefore, that's my answer. n equals 12, that's the first number that makes this quotient raised to a power completely real, okay? Before we leave off, what if I wanted it to be completely imaginary? How would that change? It has to be pi on 2 or pi on... Oh, so, so for instance, if we come back to this guy, right? Pi on 3, 2 pi on 3, um, 3 pi on 3, which is pi, and that's when I get to real. How many times would I have to go around to get to the imaginary axis for this number? Pi on 2? No. It's 270. This number over here is just pi on 3, right? Let me just rehearse this for you so you can see the answer, right? There's z1, there's z1 squared, there's z1 cubed. z1 to the 4 is going to be here, right? z1 to the 5 will be here. Where's z1 to the 6 going to be? z1 to the 6. What happens to the angle if I raise to the 6th power? According to De Marvel's theorem, I'm going to multiply the angle by 6, which will be 2 pi. I'm back to here. Hold on, that's a problem. Isn't that a problem? I'm never going to get to the imaginary axis on this number anyway. Do you, you see? You see? Yeah. Um, I'm on real, I'm complex, complex, real, complex, complex, but I'm never going to, no multiple, I'm just going to keep back on, on this one, right? On that argument, okay? So this number, no matter how many times you multiply it, will never get you to the completely imaginary axis. So it's not like it has to be the angle you made like a multiple of pi? What argument? We said whole number multiples of pi will be real, yeah. right? What are the arguments of the positive imaginary axis and the negative imaginary axis? Pi on 
Pi on 2? Give me another angle that will get me there. Minus one. I've got to go, to get back here, I've got to go 2 pi around. Right? That'll give me 5 pi on 2. That's okay. Right? Give me another one. 9 pi on 2. That's okay. How about this guy down here? Minus pi on 2. Or can you give me a positive one? 3 pi on 2. 3 pi on 2 will do it. Right? Or seven. 5 pi. 7. Uh, 7 pi, sorry, you added 4. 7 pi. Or minus, etc. Okay? So what can you now say about these multiples of pi? They're not whole number they multiples, are they? They have to be odd. They have to be odd. They're more than odd, though, don't they? They have to be odd, and they have to be divided by 2. <laughs> They're all on 2. Right? They have to be to get up onto the right angle, okay? So in other words, the way I'd say it is instead of saying this, I would say, okay, now, here's the easy part, it's all on two. How do I have an odd number? How do I make an odd number? Um, 2k pi would be even numbers, right? 2k pi, because that would give you 0, 2, 4. If I want odd numbers, right, I want all of the even numbers but off by one, right? So I could do it either 2k plus one pi, or I could do 2k minus, that would still give me the odd numbers, okay? You can see this is rather more complicated, which is why it's not the first example I showed you, okay? But it will come up just as much. In fact, you can go ahead and you can try this question. Find the smallest positive integer such that you don't get a wholly real number, but you get a wholly, a purely imaginary number. It's a bit trickier, it's not impossible.